Sericulture, or farming silkworms to make silk, feels like the practice of a bygone era. For those of you returning, thank you for coming back. If you are new, welcome. I've set out to share the process of renovating my akia, or vacant house, in rural Japan. So why are we talking about silkworms? Well, I think there are some valuable insights into Japanese tradition and slow living to be learned from the culture of silk in Japan. Sometimes I hear people here say that there is a spirit held in everything. Have you ever gone to a new place and immediately felt good all over? Even though my house was abandoned and empty for years, it immediately felt welcoming. Right away, we were comfortable enough to lounge slowly on the living room tatami. Even though there were truckloads of items to be sorted for cleaning or recycling or garbage, it felt good here. Even though things were covered in plastic and layers of dust, it felt loved. I've only heard a few stories about Yumi, the previous resident, so far. But from the fabric, crafts, sewing supplies, pattern books, and half-finished projects, we can assume she was creative. Makers and creatives often share a love for being in the flow. Being in the state of mind similar to meditation where you are focused on your project. Stressors of daily life fade away. You're focusing on beauty and creation. I don't know this woman, but as a person who finds solace in creative activities, I feel a connection to her. I imagine she lived a warm and slow life. Do you believe that a home can embody history, intention, and spirit? And if you do, what about an object? Of course, it is easy to see how a person's spirit can shape a work of art. But what about the life embodied in an object by way of other kinds of creatures? I've been thinking about the past life of fabric recently. Plants, like cotton or flax. Animals, like wool. Recycled items, like from PET bottles or recycled fibers. Chemical processing, such as in rayon or with polyester, or bugs, like from silkworms. And as it turns out, imagining the spirit of fabric as it comes from insects is unexpectedly delightful. Here in the Japanese countryside, you will happen upon a house here or there that used to house the silk industry. <laughs> Sericulture, or silk farming, has played an important role in rural farming homes in rural Japan for centuries. It involves raising silkworms and harvesting their cocoons to produce silk which can then be spun into thread and woven into fabric. This area in particular has found that the local environment offered great condition for growing mulberry and producing luxury quality raw silk. The quality in fact is so high that the silk from this very place was worn by Queen Elizabeth during her coronation. It was a major contributor to the prosperity of the town. At one point in time, sericulture was only surpassed by rice as a source of income to farmers. At the start of the 1900s, Japan exported more silk than anywhere else in the world. But the industry declined overnight. There used to be 2,500 factories all over Japan, but now only four remain. 
The decline can be attributed to several factors, including the aftermath of the Great Depression, westernization and reduced demand for kimono silk fabric, advances in synthetic fiber production, and shifts in Japan's economic and demographic landscapes. And with an aging population and declining birth rate, many trades are fading quickly. Fewer young people seek to carry cultural traditions forward to the next generations. All of these factors together mean that the sericulture industry in Japan is on the verge of extinction. There are still some people working to preserve the tradition of sericulture and silk weaving in Japan. They are finding new outlets to keep the practices alive. Like here, in Nomura Ehime Prefecture, a place famous for three things, sumo, milk, and silk. Yeah, I like that, that 
金色になる、うん、ゴールドゴールド、うんこれが、えー、カイコの、えー、内部ですね。<笑> Backed and operated by the local government branch, it is no longer a vibrant trade. While silk culture is still in practice, it feels like a ghost of something, a history to be looked back upon. But while it differs in many ways from the centuries old silk industry, it remains an important part of Japan's cultural landscape. And a source of pride for the area. But I can't help but wonder. The silk experience in rural Japan today is not at all the same industry that it was before. What used to be a common cottage industry in this area is now something to be observed behind glass. Does this mean the tradition already went extinct? Silk is still farmed here, but it is not robust and it is not so common. The intention of the old cottage industry silk farmers was to create a living from a fine product. The current generation's intentions are already different to use silk for education as a workshop experience and cultural tourism. It feels like it is in a state of preservation. <laughs>
Will there ever be another chapter for prosperity for silk industry in Japan? It might not be the industry it was, but I tried my hand at silk weaving. The truth is that by having this experience, you don't just participate in cultural tourism. Making something by hand allows us to understand the full value that is embodied in intentionally crafted items. It's a wildly natural process that includes plants, insects, water, and patience. The byproduct is fish food, and the product is silk thread. But it's not just thread. It's a resourcefulness that weaves farming with an art form. As I spent hours winding pathways through silk, I didn't just gain a textile. I understood the history of the trade better. When I hold it, I'm not just holding a craft project. I'm holding the time that it embodies. And I don't just mean the time it took for the mulberry to grow, for the worms to weave their cocoons, the reeling, the natural dyeing, and the weaving. I'm holding the centuries that were invested in practicing, refining, and maintaining the culture of silk farming and sericulture heritage in rural Japan. Thank you. 
I'm not fooling anyone. The scarf itself has not been woven with great quality. I'm a novice, and I can't ask questions or understand directions well in Japanese. But you had better believe that I'm going to cherish this item. And beyond this small woven item, I feel reinvigorated to bring new life to this home through intentional design. In a world full of disposable fast products, I've realized the power of the slow ones. Just like how the slow food movement was a response to low quality fast food, I'd like to use slow design for my home project. I've already disappointed some viewers who believe I was not working fast enough. I have some more bad news. I'm not going to speed up anytime soon. The point is not to flip this place, nor is it to make a dazzling before and after image. I simply cannot bring myself to do the kind of design work I once did. The point of renovating my house is to act with intention. Understanding the ripple effects and investing time and money with purpose. Not to make a house from materials, products, and things, but to make a home from heritage, community, and a thoughtful, intentional process. The product of this environment, this culture, and this slow life. If you found my story compelling, or maybe you are one of the many people who have been following my story over the last few months, please consider becoming a part of my Patreon fan family. I want to promote a fulfilling, modest, and responsible lifestyle that isn't based on material priorities, purchasing, and promotions. As a small-scale creator, I need to get creative to make this work sustainable. When I reach a stable enough income, which, by the way, isn't much considering the cost of living here, I can also transition to dedicating more of my time to create higher quality videos for you with increased frequency. Until that day comes, I will continue to try and listen to what is and isn't working well and provide a slice of life here in as meaningful and as responsible of a way as possible. Thank you for your support and consideration. You should see the Patreon link on screen now and also in the description below. And if financial support isn't an option, I appreciate your non-monetary support in shares, likes, comments, and subscriptions. Thanks again. See you next time.